Hi, I'm Maimon, and welcome back to one of my auto repair videos. In today's video, I'm going to show you how to refill the AC refrigerant on a 2017 Honda Civic, which also applies to 2016 to 2021 models. If you're watching this video, you probably have the same problem. The AC doesn't work, or it's not cooling enough. My dad has been experiencing the same problem for the last two or three weeks, and he doesn't understand why. Because the mileage on this car is very low, it's about 50,000 miles. And in the many years that we've owned cars, we've never had a, a, a car that needs an AC recharge at 50,000 miles. Come to find out, we did, we did research on the internet and we found out that Honda actually did a, uh, a service bulletin because the condensers on these cars are bad. The condensers on these models have leaks in them. And my guess is because that they were designed for the old refrigerant, R134A instead of the new refrigerant, R1234YF. So I just want to say, before we get started with the refilling, that if you have this car, just keep in mind that Honda has extended the warranty for the uh, condenser by 10 years. So if you're ready to refill the AC and you have the old refrigerant, stop. You can only do this with the new refrigerant, R1234YF. I'll show you right now that if you have the old refrigerant, it won't work because the hose will not fit. See? And another thing is that on the label it indicates that you must use R1234YF. So if you don't have the refrigerant or the hose, you should buy it. By the way, this new refrigerant is expensive. The can itself costs $44.99. And also the hose costs $21. Uh, and we buy at, Amazon, at, at AutoZone. Just for comparison, the old refrigerant, R134A, only $6 a can. So if you don't have to do this in a hurry, I highly recommend that you get it from Amazon, where it will be cheaper. So keep a look uh, in the comments down below for links to the refrigerant and the hose. So without further ado, let's get started. Let me put this to the side. So, we want to take our can and attach it to the hose. We're going to insert it here, but keep in mind that this fitting has a, uh, a metal rod at the end. And this rod here is meant to puncture the cap of the can to release the fluid inside. So we're going to twist the rod so that it goes all the way back inside. Nope, hold on. Other way, because for some reason this hose is reverse threaded. And so now we're going to screw it on. And this side's also reverse threaded. And there we go. Now we're going to connect it to our low pressure valve. Just to make sure it has an L on the cap as opposed to an H on the cap. If you're further not sure, the low pressure hose should have a thicker diameter than the high pressure hose. Okay, with that being said, to put it on, this is a quick change valve. You push this, you pull this back, and that will allow you to insert it on. So let me get this at a good angle for you guys to see what it looks like. And you want to insert it. And then you want to turn the AC on. So once you're in the car, you want to start it. And you want to go to climate controls. We're going to set the AC to full blast. So in order to do that, we're going to press sync to make sure that our settings apply to both the driver side and the passenger side. We're going to set the AC to on. The mode doesn't, I'm not sure if it has a huge effect, but we're just going to select this one for max capabilities. We're going to set the blowers to high. And lastly, you want to make sure that if you want to set your temperature to low using this knob on the left. The reason that you want to make sure that the AC is on, and therefore the engine's on, is because if the AC isn't on, then the gauge for pressure will give you a false reading. So right now you can see that the gauge reads about 45 PSI. And actually before we did this clip, it was in the yellow. The pressure went down because we released the hose a few times, and so the pressure went down. But you'll see that when we turn the AC on, 
it actually gives a much lower reading. All right, so now the AC is on, therefore the engine's on. So I'm going to unplug this and plug it back in to show you where the pressure actually is. So now, with the AC on, you can see it's actually at about 30 this time. So with the AC on, we're going to release it and put it back on, just so that the gauge is accurate. And now we're going to start refilling the AC refrigerant. So we're going to take the can, and we're going to penetrate it. The pressure reading might, right now might be in the alert zone or the danger zone. Don't get worried just yet, because can is pressurized, so obviously it's going to read a higher pressure right now. And we're going to shake it every few seconds to allow the refrigerant to flow into the system. So as you do this, you want to make sure that the can is fully penetrated. You don't want to retract the pin because this is a self-sealing can. If you retract the pin, it's going to seal itself. All right, so just for example sake, I'll show you what it looks like. We're gonna puncture it again. So keep an eye on that pressure gauge. And then we're going to release it. See how it changes a bit. So we wanna make sure that this, pull, this pin is fully punctured in and that the refrigerant is flowing into the system. As you do, as you do this, you might notice that the system actually sounds louder because there's more pressure in it. And you want to do this for five to seven minutes while shaking the can. So as you're doing this, there are a few indicators to look out for to make sure that you're doing it right. The first and most obvious is that the can is getting colder. If it's not getting colder, that means something is not working. Another thing you're looking out for is for the can to get lighter. Obviously, that means that the refrigerant is flowing out. The last thing is that if you're reading the, PS the pressure gauge, this should start, this should hopefully decrease over time. And right here you can see we have a rag so that we can protect our car from scratches. When we go inside the car and we feel the fans, it feels cold. Before we did this, it didn't feel cold, it blew warm air. So, you can play around with the mode on the AC, because right now, the fan doesn't seem to be blowing that much, but when we put it to this mode, you can hear it get much louder. So maybe this is the best mode to put the AC on uh, so that the AC is working as much as it can. So you can play around with the mode uh, however you want. Okay, so we're going to take the can out. Uh, we're going to pull the pin all the way out. Oh, now it's all the way out. Uh, and then we're going to take the valve out. <laughs> so now we can set this aside and Back on. Now if you hear a hissing as you remove the hose from the valve, that means that something went wrong and you just wasted $44. And let me tell you why. Now this is a self-sealing refrigerant can, which means that you have to make sure that when you are filling the refrigerant, that the pin is all the way in. When the pin is all the way in, that will allow the fluid to flow out. If the pin is not puncturing through it and it's all the way out, that means that the can that is self-sealing, hold on, sorry, reverse threads, will seal itself, uh, preventing any fluid from escaping. All right, so my dad wanted me to uh, mention, I mean, I am saying it correctly. Technically it is fluid, but it's more precise to say that the refrigerant is in a vapor form. So, just wanted to mention that. Okay, so that's the entire procedure. I hope I helped you out with this video. Uh, I know it's a very long video because we're, we talk and we go a lot into depth about it. But part of that is because as we're doing this, we're also learning about the job. Um, and I hope that as you're doing this, you're also consulting other videos because it's always not a good idea to only rely on one source. One thing I want to mention, just again, before we, we close is that Honda sent out a service bulletin about the condenser leaking. And like I said, it's possibly, probably, due to the fact that it's meant to work with the older R134A refrigerant instead of the newer one. 
By the way, if you're curious why they use the new refrigerant, it's because of new like regulations. It's more environmentally friendly. I mean, there's other differences, but that's the main reason. So if you have this model, just keep in mind that there is a 10 year extended warranty on the condenser specifically. So you can take this to the dealership and if they find out, if they, do, if they run diagnostics and they find out that the condenser is bad, then they will re replace it for you free of charge. However, if they do diagnostics and they find out that the condenser is not the problem, they will charge you a diagnostics fee. So it's probably, it's in your best interest to do this procedure first, uh, just to make sure that it's not, the, it, that something else isn't your problem before you send it back to the dealership. So if you do refill your own refrigerant, just make sure you don't use the one with stop leak or dye in it. Because if you do, and you take it to the dealer, if they open it up and they find that, then they'll think that someone messed with the system and they won't honor their warranty. All right, so I'm Ayman, and thanks for watching. Please like, comment, subscribe, and look at videos on Ayman, especially the videos on the Hobbit Honda Civic and other auto repair videos. I hope this video helped. If it did, then leave a comment down below, and uh, I'll see you in the next videos. I'm Ayman, and signing out. Peace.